Hey, turn to Song of Songs chapter 4 with me. Song of Songs chapter 4 in your Bibles. Other translations will read Song of Solomon. And you can ask Google why that is. It's a lot quicker. Uh, Song of Songs uh, chapter 4 is where we're going to be. We're in part 3, week 3 of this series titled God, Love, Sex. God, Love, Sex. Last week... We talk about different seasons for, for everything there is, is a season, uh, Ecclesiastes 3 says. And, and so we talked about different seasons in our lives. We talked about that there will be seasons of, of passion. There will be seasons of passion. There will be seasons of excitement. He described this, the, the animals leaping over the mountains and bounding over the hills. And there, there's just this excitement. And uh, some of you remember that, that the, those exciting days, uh, as I described earlier, even when I first saw Audra, uh, across the room, and some of you, you have that similar story. Some of you are waiting for that, that story, and, and hold on. Uh, I want to encourage you. Uh, but there will be seasons of, of, of passion. We talked about there will be seasons of preparation. There will be seasons of preparation. And if you're married today, you need to go back to those, those seasons of preparation and, and talk about the, the dreams that, that you used to talk about. Talk about the goals. Revisit those goals. Where, where do we want to go uh, from here? Where are we going together? And, uh, and then we talked about in all seasons, uh, we need to protect our purity. In all seasons, uh, we need to protect our purity. It's a call of God uh, on our lives to live uh, holy lives. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, but uh, we, we must protect our purity at all costs. Uh, and so today we're pressing in on the intimate blessings of marriage. The intimate blessings of of marriage, one of the greatest intimate blessings of marriage that we're going to be talking about today is uh, is sex, and so we're going to be talking about that today. One of the intimate blessings of God. If you're single today, may I just encourage you uh, in this before we move forward that I will wait that I will wait until marriage to share in the intimate blessings of marriage. I will wait until marriage to share in the intimate blessings of marriage. As we talked even last week, we talked about how that God designed and created sex. The world has twisted and perverted sex, uh, human love and sexuality. Everywhere we look, everywhere we, uh, every, almost every conversation, that there's some kind of form, uh, 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 twist uh, on God's intention for sex. And so even when I mention it in the church setting, sometimes we're like, I don't know, can we really talk about this? And uh, uh, we're going to see in chapter 4 uh, that it is, in fact, uh, talked about. And uh, all throughout Scripture, uh, the call to avoid sexual sin and, and the purpose of, of sex, that, that intimacy that, that is drawn between husband and wife, that, that, that really shouldn't or, or can't be shared with anyone else. And so I will wait until marriage to share in the intimate blessings of marriage. And uh, if you're married today, may I, may I encourage you before we move forward, if you're married today, that uh, uh, the call of God is to only share the intimate blessings of marriage with the one that God has placed in your life, and protecting our purity at all costs. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, before we dive into the Old Testament Song of Songs. Hebrews 13, 4, would you write this down? New Living Translation says, give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. Give honor to marriage. Uh, listen, this, as society continues on, we get further and further away from the value of marriage. Marriage designed by God, the covenant of marriage designed by God. The two become one, Scripture says, in marriage. It's a beautiful thing. Give honor to marriage. And remain faithful to one another in marriage. Listen, perhaps you were raised in a family where there was some unfaithfulness. Uh, perhaps you're in you know, a, a circle of influence where there's unfaithfulness. No matter your past and no matter your present, may I encourage you in your future to remain faithful. To remain faithful. So today, once again, we're looking at the intimate blessings of marriage, the intimate blessings of marriage. Sex can be one of the greatest blessings in the covenant of marriage, or, or it can be a tremendous point of tension. Don't miss this. Some of you have experienced that. It can be one of the greatest blessings of marriage, or it can be a tremendous point of tension within the marriage. 
And so let's look at verse 1 through 4. Chapter 4, Song of Songs, verses 1 through 4. How beautiful you are, my darling. How very beautiful behind your veil. Your eyes are doves. Your hair is like a flock of goats streaming down Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of newly shorn sheep coming up from washing. Each one bearing twins and none has lost its young. Your lips are like a scarlet cord and your mouth is lovely. Behind your veil, your brow is like a slice of pomegranate. Your neck is like the Tower of David, constructed in layers. A thousand shields are hung on it, all of them shields of warriors. What, what a text, man. Most of us have no clue what's happening here other than the mention <laughs> of beauty, of teeth. Uh, we're like, really, teeth? Wow. Um, but, but some of you have said, I've heard it said, man, you have beautiful teeth. And, and so that, I know that's a thing. Uh, it's just probably not a common thing, right? But man, the teeth, um, the, uh, the, the brow, the mouth, the lips, the neck. I mean, he's describing it, it all. He's describing it all. And by the way, when you travel throughout Israel, some of this does start to make sense. Some of this does start to connect and just kind of put it out there, little uh, little promo March 1st, I'm holding an info to uh, Israel for January 2021, March 1st. That's two Sundays from now. Uh, we'll meet in the back at 1030, right? And uh, so as you walk through uh, Israel, ride through Israel now, Jesus walked, we ride. And uh, some of this really does start to make sense. Like why would they use pomegranate of all things? Pomegranate juice throughout Israel is incredible. It's so fresh, so good. Um, now, the thing about the sheep uh, it, 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 important to note before we move forward, just, these are just fun facts, by the way, and, 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 and these are free. Um, it, it says the, the washing, right, the washing of newly shorn sheep coming up from washing. Man, sheep uh, in Israel, throughout Israel, are just nasty. You think a dairy farm, like, smells bad? I thought a dairy farm smelled bad. But go hang around some dirty sheep that have been out with the shepherd, right, hanging out. That's nasty. It, it, they smell. It is wretched. It's, it's terrible. Uh, but this man describes really in detail. Most of us men, we only have a, a few details. This man is very detailed. He is a compliment machine. Now listen, as we talk about the intimate blessings of God, great sex starts before the bedroom. Great sex starts before the bedroom. What am I talking about? I'm talking about what he's describing. I mean, he's complimenting all of her, not just a part of her. He's complimenting all of her, those details. You think about the last time, if you're married today, think about the last time that you complimented your, 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 your spouse. Think about the last time you complimented fellows, you complimented your, your, your ladies. You, you just think about that. And by the way, Valentine's does not count, all right? It doesn't count. If you think it counts and you're good until the next date, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Uh, but you think about that. What does it look like to compliment Man, some of you, some of you, you're just one compliment away of having a better marriage. And I know that sounds like, what? No way. But it's true. It's true. Something connects with her heart and her soul as you just share one compliment about her. And, and ladies, this isn't just on the men here. This isn't just on the men here. It, it goes both ways. Your man is longing for affirmation. Am I going to work? Am I doing this thing? Does anybody really care? Does it really matter? Is anyone proud of me? And I know that may sound childish to a certain extent, but most men, uh, if we're honest, you know, there's a little bit of child in us. And so, uh, man, we're longing for that. We're longing for that. And by the way, I'm not just talking about Facebook, social media posts. Man, I'm talking about real, looking in the eyes, conversation. We need to get back to the real FaceTime. The true FaceTime of complimenting. Great sex starts before the bedroom. We see this description. And I want to challenge all of us to step in and begin doing a better job, be more intentional with complimenting the one that God has placed in our, in our lives. Uh, a second, look at verse 5. It gets really interesting very fast in verse 5. Your breasts are like fawns, like two fawns. Twins of the gazelle that feed among the lilies. Yes, the scripture does say that. It does say that. Your breasts are like two fawns. Uh, great sex not only starts in the bedroom, but great sex is 
tender. It's tender. I love the description of fawns. And of all the animals, I mean, he uses in this text, fawns. Now, fawn, for those that don't know, and I honestly I had to do a little research. I'm, I'm not the hunter guy, if you didn't know. But a fawn is a deer within the first year. It's that cute baby Bambi. It's that you just want to kind of cuddle it, hold it. It's very tender. I'm just, I'm just being honest. And you, you take it from there in a godly fashion. But that's, that's what a fawn is. That's what a fawn is. Tenderness. And now listen. Man, I believe that there are marriages that need to recover the art of tenderness. We think, man, after the, after the, the, the marriage is everything's sealed and I, I don't have to pursue her. I can just talk however I want. I can act like however I want. No, you can't. Man, we have some marriages that need to recover the art of tenderness, of tenderness. In both ways, by the way, not just sexually. In our language, in our actions. Colossians chapter 3, verse 19. Would you write this reference down? Colossians 3 19 says, husbands, husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Love your wives and never treat them harshly. I know this may be a gut check for some of us, uh, but, but, but we need it. We need it. We need to recover the, the art of tenderness. Never treat them harshly. I wonder, how do you treat your, your wives? How do you treat your wife? How do you treat the one that God has placed in your life? Do you treat them with love and respect, with tenderness? Or are you always harsh? Now, it's a part of my personality, but there comes to a point where you have to say, I have to stop using my personality as an excuse. Uh, we have to come to a point where we have to say, how I was raised, I have to stop using that as an excuse. And, and what I'm talking about is this area of harshness. Man, I, I, I've observed people communicate so harshly. I'm wondering, how can there be any kind of relationship here? How can there be any love, any affection here by how we're speaking, by how they're speaking to one another? And, and you know, yeah, sure, man, some of you, maybe you have the game face on, the church face on, but man, as soon as you get behind closed doors, I mean, it is another whole other game. And, and, and if that is the case, may I just be the voice of God for a moment and say, you were in sin, repent, confess, and begin treating her with love and respect. And I know it's not just a man thing. I have also observed it go the other way. There are some very vocal ladies. Praise God, praise God. But there, there are moments uh, that uh, our, our vocalness is so harsh that we are bringing destruction in our marriages. Can I just talk to the single folks just for a moment? The single folks for a moment, uh, the person that you're dating or that you will date soon or whenever that may be, that, that, that person, can I just say this much to you? That if you're in a relationship with someone and they're treating you harshly, speaking to you harshly, can I just tell you, don't be fooled. It's not going to change when, they get, when you get married. I, I, I have been told countless times, oh, just wait, just wait. When we get married, he promises when we get married, it's going to be okay. No, it's not. It's not going to change. If they won't change now, what makes you think they're going to change later? Can I just tell you, if you're single today, you are valuable. God loves you. God has a plan for you. God has someone for you. And the question is, will you be patient? Will you wait Will you prepare yourself? Some of you, you're just wasting time. Can I just say that? You're just wasting time. Right now is a season of preparation. And you're saying, no, when I meet that person, then I'll begin preparing. No, 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 you're missing the whole thing. No, begin preparing now so that when God does place that person in your life, you're ready for them. We need to recover the, the art of tenderness. Look at verse six. Look at verse six. Until the day breaks. And the, and the shadows flee. I will make my way to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense until the day breaks. Hey, great sex is not only tender, not only starts before the bedroom. Great sex is indeed passionate. It is passionate. Scripture said until the day breaks. 
Man, this is just raw, clean, holy, passionate lovemaking between a husband and wife. There's no other way around it. That, that, that's what we find in this text. And for some of us today, for some here today, man, you need to recover the passion that we talked about last week. There's no passion, or there's only passion on, on the days that the world is saying, be passionate. And can I just kick against that? Say, no, you wonder why there's a lack of communication and a lack of love and a lack of respect. Why you're treating each other the way you're treating. Because you need to recover the passion. There were some things that you used to do that you haven't done in years. And can I just tell you, fellas, she's waiting. She's waiting. And then also on the other side of it, can I just tell you, ladies, that he's waiting. And for some today, you're at a place where you need to recover the passion. Great sex is, is passionate. Look at verse 7. You are absolutely beautiful, my darling. There is no imperfection in you. You are absolutely beautiful, my darling. There is no imperfection in you. You remember those moments, those like first moments that, fellas, you thought she was the world. Ladies, you, you thought he was the world. Man, there, there's, there's never going to be anybody else. I love what, how he words it. There is no imperfection in you. It was in those early seasons that, man, if there was a flaw, you saw right past it because you had those rose-colored glasses on. You know what I'm talking about? Man, it was just full of love, and it's like, that's all I see is love. All I see is love. You're like on a cloud of love. <laughs> and the years go by, and you're wondering where to, where did that love go? And then you start pointing out these different imperfections, these different flaws. All the while, you think you're perfect. Can I just tell you that there's no perfect person here? Uh, you have your uglies, amen? Everybody does. But what happens is as the years go by, we start pointing those things out rather than just focusing on the one that God has placed in my life for, for me and the qualities, the good qualities that they possess. What we see here in verse 7 is that great sex is built on absolute trust. It's built on absolute trust. And, and the reason I say that is because if you remember in week one, we talked about four qualities that attracted this man and woman together. Four different qualities. One of those qualities was they built godly trust. They built godly trust. In chapter one, she says, hey, don't look at me because the, the sun has gazed on me too much. She's like, I'm burnt. Don't look at me. There, there's this imperfection, and, and, and so don't look at me. And, and then they begin to work through the insecurities. And then we find in chapter 2, her response has shifted. In chapter 2, what does she say? I believe it's verse 6. I delight uh, 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 in your shade. I delight in your shade. And, uh, and so they've, they've moved from, hey, here's my insecurity. Here's this area that I'm insecure about. And, and they're working through that insecurity. They're building a trust with one another. And she's to the point now, she's like, I trust you. You're protecting me. And, and I love what he says in chapter, uh, verse 7. There's no imperfection in you. There's no imperfection in you. He, he's, he's reminding her, hey, whatever thought that you had, whatever the flaws that you were holding on to, there is no imperfection in you. And they're just growing in their godly trust for one another. And I wonder today, has the trust been broken in, in, your, in your marriage? Has the trust been broken in your marriage? I want you to know today that if the trust has been broken in your marriage, that restoration is possible and it is available. It, it's possible to have that godly trust back once again that you used to have. Uh, however, it, it does take time and it takes work. Uh, and the starting place is always humility and forgiveness. Without humility, you can't forgive. I mean, you can try to forgive, you can say I forgive you, but, but if you're saying it out of a 
proud place or you just want to move forward because you're done talking about this place, then it's not going to stick. Hear me today. You want to come back to that place of godly trust, then it's going to require humility. It always starts with humility. That's the only, uh, we're only able to forgive as we humble ourselves. Because here's what happens. As we humble ourselves, we're reminded that there was a point that I was forgiven. I was forgiven by the shed blood on Calvary. Man, I'm a wretched sinner, doomed and damned to hell. But there was a point in my life that Jesus stepped in, saved me. When he saved me, he forgave me of all sins. So if you need restoration in your marriage today, the best starting place is humility. Humility. Then forgiveness. And may I just say this before I move forward. If, if you're in a place where it's a bit rocky right now and you need some, some godly counsel, I want you to know that the leadership of Discovery Church, that we are here to walk with you through this season. We are here to help you uh, in a confidential manner, to point you to biblical principles to bring restoration in your, in your marriage. Look at verse 9 through 11. You have captured my heart, my sister. Other translations read my, my treasure, my treasure. My bride, you have captured my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How delightful your caresses are, verse 10. My sister, my bride, your caresses are much better than wine and the fragrance of your perfume than any balsam. Your lips drip sweetness like the honeycomb. My bride, honey and milk are under your tongue. The fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. Uh, great sex is deep. It's deep. What I mean by that is it's not shallow. It's not on a surface level like the world has made it out to be. Great sex is not cheap. It can't be bought. Great sex is shared between a husband and wife that have entered a covenant before the Lord. Now, I understand that um, I may be talking to a room full of fellows that are uh, no, uh, no Romeos in the house. You know what I'm talking about? There, there might be some. There might be a couple. Praise God for you. But there's a lot of wannabes. I can guarantee that. But I will also say that that you married a Juliet. No matter if you're a Romeo or not, you married a Juliet. Uh, and she wants to be romance. She wants not just the physical side of the relationship and of lovemaking, but she wants the emotional side as well. And so great sex is, is in fact, uh, very, very deep and should only be shared between a husband and wife because of the intimate level and the intimate blessings that, that are received from it. Which leads us to, to the next. It, it can't be, it shouldn't be shared with anyone else because great sex is, is holy. Look at verse 12. My sister, my bride, you are a locked garden, a locked garden and a sealed spring. He's referring to, hey, you're a private garden, he says. It's a private garden. You're a private garden. You are a locked garden. Great sex is, is holy. First Thessalonians helps us understand what I mean by this. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says, God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sin. Before we go any further, understand Paul, the apostle, is writing to the church of Thessalonica. Say that like five times fast, and I'll give you a prize. Thessalonica, he's writing to this church in Thessalonica, and he's saying, hey, there's all kind of other talks, and, and the culture's doing other kind of things, <clears throat> and there's all kinds of different religious beliefs that are creeping into the church. But I want you to know this, that God's will for your life is to be holy, I, many people ask me, what I, I'm just trying to find God's will for my life. And, and often my response is, is simply this scripture. 
Uh, I don't know what God's plan may be, but I can tell you that right now, right here, his plan for you is to be holy. And what does that word holy mean? The word holy simply means set apart. It means set apart. Uh, and we're holy as, as he is holy. We're, we're striving to be holy as, as he is holy. God's will for you is to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sin. All sexual sin. Then, verse 4, then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor. Do, do you see those two words? Holiness and honor. Would you say it with me? Holiness and honor. Each of you will control as you abstain. You'll control your own body and live in holiness and honor. Not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Once again, he's talking about, oh, 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 hey, church, everybody else might be doing this kind of thing over here, but this is God's plan for your life. Stay right here. Stay walking with him. Live a holy life. Live a different life. Yes, people are going to talk about you. Man, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna say all kinds of things. They're going to try to bring you down to their level and don't go down to their level. Continue to live the life that God has called you to live. Holiness matters. In 2020, I can't think of a, I can't think of a greater goal than holiness. Holiness matters. And what you're saying by making this, this, this a focus in your life, this is what you're saying. I, I'm honoring my spouse by living a holy life. Now, some of you are saying I'm single, I don't have a spouse. In, in your singleness, as you're preparing for your spouse, as you stay uh, uh, away from sexual sin and live a holy life, you are honoring your spouse. You're honoring the one that God is going to bring into your life one day. Secondly, in this area of holiness and, and how holiness matters, is that you are teaching your children and the next generation to live a holy life. They're looking at you. They're watching you. They're listening to you. They're watching the world. They're watching others. They're having conversations at school. Holiness matters. And I wonder, what, what does that look like in your home? Only you can answer that, by the way, what, it, what that looks like in your home. Perhaps by the things that are talked about, the, the things that are shown on TV. Can I just also take it just one step further? Holiness has everything to do with your private life as well. I'm talking about the, the, the things that no one else sees, the things that you think your children don't see. And there are things that your children certainly don't see. However, if you continue on this path, the path that I believe is of destruction, they will eventually see it. It'll be a terrible thing. Now, what would it look like for us in this year to focus in on holiness personally and as a family? I just want to be like you. I want to grow in relationship with you. Everything's going to work itself out. Listen, some of you have lost all, all hope that you could ever have a godly relationship. Some of you have lost all hope that you could ever have a godly relationship. Some of you are, are locked into some sexual sin at this, even at this moment. Some of you are, are hooked on uh, pornography. You're in a relationship that you know that you shouldn't be in because it's leading you down this this, this path away from God. Uh, uh, some of you stepped into a world of, uh, of homosexuality or bisexual actions. There's everything but God in your sexual life. Listen closely and carefully, would you? You're confused. You're afraid. You're hurt. You, you feel bitter. You feel dirty. You feel vulnerable. But no matter what you've done, no matter how great the sin is, there is no sin that is too great for, that, for Christ to forgive. There is no bondage, no addiction, too great that Christ cannot set you free. And whoever Jesus sets free is free indeed. That's what scripture declares. No matter what you're going through right now, no, no matter how great the hurt, there's no hurt too great that Christ cannot heal. 
And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, listen, He's here, He is present, and He is the only answer. He is the only answer. Would you bow your heads and would you close your eyes? All across this place, would you just start by saying, Lord, what is my response today? Would you just start there, Lord, what is, what is my response today? Allow him to speak to your heart. Allow him to speak to your heart. God, what is my response today? As you're praying that, considering that, thinking that through, I believe that we all have next steps. And the next step that I want to challenge us is this. I will pursue holiness in every area of my life. And so would you take time this week and just, just look through the different areas of your life. Pray through the different areas of your life. And just ask the Lord, Lord, am Am I pursuing holiness in this area, in this area, in this area? Lord, am I in a relationship that is, is bringing me down? I feel that I'm heading towards destruction if I stay in this. Would you give me the strength and courage to, to, to remove myself from this relationship? Some today... Marriage lately is has been difficult. And perhaps uh, the starting place is, is, is humility. And saying, Lord, I humble myself before you. And I forgive. I forgive him, I forgive her. I want restoration in my marriage. Lord, I've been selfish. And I need to recover the art of tenderness and passion. I need your help. I, I don't know what your prayer is today. I don't know what needs to change in, in you. I can only answer that for, for me personally. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for how good you are. We thank you for how much you love us. We thank you for a text even like this. But a, but a passage of scripture that we, 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 we do need. Lord, you know every heart, every person that's here today. You know what they're going through. And you know how to minister best to them. So Lord, I thank you for your power that is alive and available right here, right now. Lord, I know the enemy is going to continue to come against. But Lord, I pray that your church individually, we would put the full armor of God on, able to withstand every attack of the enemy. Lord, I pray that you would reveal your word in a, a new and a fresh way even this week to us. Lord, as we seek you and as we seek holiness, Lord, help us to honor you with our lives. God, I pray that there would the words that come out of our mouth, that our actions would be different than the world, God. And as the world takes notice and even at times begins to try to use it as a weapon against us to bring us down, Lord, I pray that we would press in even further in your power. And so, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. It's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.